Let's see how you do under pressure, oh Yeah, I've been wanted this shit forever I've been in the field with whatever they throw at me Brush it off, pick myself up, moving on to the better Okay, hey. yeah. Ain't no errors, baby, it's a new era I wake up early, feeling rich like I'm Kesha I get to the paper, boy Extra, extra How are you doing? I'm all good, yeah, all good, you? Look at your face, all beautiful again I oh, know, thank God, fucking hell I look like the elephant man Oh man, do you know what? Joe Craven put a picture of you on Did you see it on his story? Jesus, <laughs> come back <laughs> Nobody, nobody seen me And he comes back And he takes a fucking video on <laughs> I saw it on his story. I was like, oh shit, because I hadn't seen like obviously this is why I, so yeah, sorry, because we are gonna clip this and put it on fight division. So the reason me and you were catching up now is because it hit my fight league. I didn't get a chance to see you after the fight. So normally I always come grab you for a chat and, and obviously I didn't get to see you, but then I went on my Insta and Joe Craven. <laughs> yeah, there was there was no way there was no way I was doing an interview like that. And anyway, I just fucking hell, man. I was in bits. Oh man, talk to me about that. Obviously, have you watched the fight back? Because Hitman Fight League, I don't know what the delay was, but there was a bit of delay in putting the fight out. So I think it was two or three yeah. days before they put it out. Have you watched it back? Yeah, yeah, I watched it. I, wa I watched it straight away. I was in A&E watching the fight. I bought the live stream just to watch it back. Oh my God. Yeah, but fucking hell, those four ounce gloves, man, they're yeah. crazy. Fucking ounce. So yeah, that's so obviously there's there's so many things I want to talk to you about, and I know I must blag your head because I'm messaging you all the time asking about like fight stuff and what you're up to. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're like so heavily invested now. I went to ask like before before you went into this one, was the like not like um not like contentment like but like. Because you'd had three knockouts, you'd had three wins, you you kind of like smooth sailing at this point. You hadn't really like any bumps in the road. So was there a bit of you that was like, nah, I'm just going to come in, I'm going to smash this, no bother? Like, how would you yeah. do for it? Def definitely, yeah. Like, I think my ego as well, kind of, because I was knocking people, like, I'm a knockout artist. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, once I get into the small gloves, anybody I touch, yeah, is going. no it's, chance. <laughs> yeah, like, like, fucking, like I'm not people out with the big gloves. That would only make sense to think. Yeah, when you're buckle. Not, we all thought the same. We all thought the same. Yeah, and then Jesus, man, like Jacob, fair play to him. Like I hit him, like devastating shots. Yeah. Like I could see the hurts, and he just kept coming. Like it was mad. Exactly. Like when you like so obviously before you know and I've spoke to everyone who you fought as well. Um, Don yeah. was one of the best ones who just said he was like he just come over and before we even started the interview and he hits hard and that was like the first thing he said to me. So like everybody else, it is like you do the shot, you see the damage, and it kind of gives you that momentum to keep going. Then, but with Jacob, it's like you do the shot, you see the damage, yeah. and he just doesn't stop coming forward. Like mentally, did that throw you off for a second? Because like you say, like. I don't want to, I don't, you use the word ego, I'm not saying ego, but there is yeah. that inside of you that's like, oh shit, what do I do now? Yeah. Because that didn't stop him. Yeah, like when, when I was hitting him and I was hitting him flush. Yeah. And like, say I was hitting him, it would be like an uppercut and a right hand. And it was landing both of the shots. And like, I wasn't throwing another shot because it was like, this is the part where you, where you fall, do you know this what I mean? This where you're supposed to drop. Yeah. So I'd hit him, boom, boom, and he'd still be there. And then, like, looking back on the fight, I should have been following up because I was catching him, and then I had a chance yeah. to land a more shot. But I was just expecting him to fucking drop. <laughs> so when he didn't, I was like, I think my brain was like, this isn't supposed to happen. What's going on? Yeah. Do you know what is mad? But, like, we were, all, we were all the same watching it. So it was really, it was... I mean, I'm, like I say, I've not caught up with you properly since, but we was all watching it live, obviously, and there was a really weird moment of, like, everyone buzzing and, like, wow, this is a great fight, and then it kind of changed to, like, oh, shit, this is a little, this is quite hard to watch, actually. Like, it, it just yeah. turned into, like, this just shot for shot, and you landed one flush, and he landed one flush, and there was blood mm -hmm. everywhere. The Origin Project, so uh, Sean Aspinall, I actually was stood next to him at one point, and we were chatting, and he had, like, a big splash of blood across his face, and it was from your fight, so we don't know who's <laughs> Was, but he was like yeah well it is what it is um but yeah, yeah. so definitely a moment in the crowd where everyone kind of just went obviously it was an amazing fight to watch but there was like a, a a layer underneath it of like wow god these guys are literally like very literally putting a life on the line for this yeah. did you feel that in there like 
this is another level of fight now. Yeah, exactly. Like when, so when I got dropped, I, the first, the first time he knocked me down was kind of like a flash knockdown. It was as I was going backwards. Yeah. But the, but the second knockdown, he caught me flush. Like I threw a kick, mm. and he, I think he caught me leg and threw the right hand. Yeah. And like I was on one leg, got caught flush, and Jesus, I think after that point. It wasn't a Muay Thai fight anymore. I was like, right, this is fucking, this is a fight to the death now. Let's go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, that's the moment it, that the crowd switched as well. Like, we felt it with you because, like I said, there was definitely a moment in the crowd where everyone went from, like, screaming and buzzing and, like, oh, my God, look at these guys to, like, oh, God, this is a little bit different yeah. now. Like, there was just, I can't explain it. There was just, like, an atmosphere and mood and emotion change of, like. Yeah. Oh, it was. It was dark, man, because, like. Dark. That's the right word. Yeah, in the so going back to the corner after I got knocked down twice. Yeah. And in the second round, then I was like, right, this cunt had to drop me twice here. I was like, <laughs> oh, this around now and make it an amazing comeback. Yeah. And then in the round, I was landing like fucking, like honestly, I've never hit somebody that flush that, that yeah. many yeah. times. And like, I could feel every shot landing like and uh like he was wobbling he was all over the place and i remember just thinking like how was he still standing like i was literally peeing off on him was like this is mental you know and then the third round then like i couldn't see out my eye me fucking me face busted me lip i kept touching my face in the fight if you watch it and i was like my face together here like what the fuck you know (laughs) Because my lips just felt mental. Yeah. So suppose, like, we, we don't think of that from your point of view. Like, we can obviously see how it looks, but I bet you're feeling... Yeah. It's that thing, in it, like, when you have a spot and you feel like it's well bigger than it is. I bet you were feeling, yeah. you're thinking, oh, my God, like, is this, like... You, you couldn't see the damage at that point. At what point did you, obviously, when you got out of the ring, did you, like, go to the change rooms? Like, when was that oh. first moment where you looked and thought, God, this was actually a war? So in the fight, I felt my face just felt like it was fucking huge. And even, like, I was basically fighting out of just pure instinct at one point. Like, I could barely see. He was the same. We were both busted, you know? And then I think after the fight, like, there's a bit where me and him are hugging each other. And I was, like, me, I could feel me face was just, like, throbbing. Like, and usually after a fight, you can't feel pain. Uh, Yeah, you said that before last time. It was the calf kicks and you're like, oh, the adrenaline's there. I don't feel them. Yeah. Yeah. No, I knew, I knew I was like hurt and say going into the fucking, into the tour round, especially like, and yeah, we were like hugging at one stage and like I put my head into his, into his like shoulder and I was like, fucking hell, like, I, I was like, my face must be in a bad way here. And then like, there's a bit where we're about like that and I'm just like, oh Jesus, like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, and it was only then after the fight, uh, I was like, how do I look? I said to me coach or something. He was like, Jesus, you're in bits, mate. <laughs> and he showed me, like, I thought I was in bits. But when I seen the fucking thing, I was like, oh, my God, man. Oh, I man. never like that ever after a fight. Like, Do you know what, as well? It's mad because he did an interview. Um, it wasn't with us. Like, I watched him do an interview be- before the fight. And he was saying, he was like, oh, J- like, basically he was saying you were the one that he wanted to fight out of everyone in the four-man tournament. He's like, I'd yeah. like to fight Jay because I don't think anyone's really brought that war to him. Like, he literally yeah. said that sentence. He was like, yeah. he's, he's good and he's got his knockouts and everything, but I don't think anyone's brought that fight to him. So, yeah. Yeah, obviously, it, that, it was so glad that it worked out the way that it was you two. But what, what were your... Um, what? I didn't want that fight for <laughs> I wanted a fucking... I wanted to go in and spark someone out handy yeah. and then like if that was the final it's like oh you got to the final and you lost yeah. you know what I mean and like because the two other lads don't speak English mm. like on the Friday me and Jacob were chatting with each other you know on the Saturday we're chatting with each other so we were actually having a laugh with each other and then it's like and now we're gonna have to go in and literally it was a fight that it like make no mistake about it yeah, I was trying to kill him and he was trying to kill me and that's do you know what I mean it was it's mad how you switch do you yes, know what I mean you're going from like 
hell's one minute and joking and laughing and then next thing you yeah. you literally are trying to and especially like in those gloves like it's it's a fight to the death do you know yeah. what I mean like difference I, I came to a realisation after that I was like fuck this is like this is different yeah like it's not Muay Thai nearly it's like it's just Muay, Muay Thai thinking went out the window it was like yeah. right outside the fucking kebab shop at four yeah, in the morning it's just straight out it's just a straight out <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was no there was no thinking or anything it was just fucking ah oh, it was mad but it is mad as well because obviously to go against someone with Jacob's like mindset and that just pure toughness if you was up mm-hmm. against somebody who you'd been against before it it might have been the view that you had like obviously you had the view that I'm a knockout artist I've got power in my shots everyone who I've interviewed after has said that you hit really hard so it mm-hmm. does make sense in the four rounds that you're going to capitalise on that and it's all going to go swimmingly if yeah against any other opponent do you think it would have gone more to that plan it was just a case of Jacob was just wired different on the day he's, he's tough as nails you know like I was chatting to Jacob after the uh, like I've been chatting me and him it's weird after you have a war like that you get a bond with somebody because yeah, of course yeah it, it's just you know how tough it was for both of us mm. so like you have that respect and like I was chatting to him after it like I broke his nose, fractured his orbital bone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like any normal person is going down off them shots. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's, so yeah, it's just it's just complete covenant. Like any normal person. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It's just yeah. wired in him where it was just like, yeah, anyone else would have took that shot and that, that would have been it. One of those shots. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's- it was three rounds of it. What's well, I can't remember the fella's name. Like when we were doing the draw, like the guy. So there was four of us in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Oh, I made way fine. Um, the Spanish lad made way grand, and then Jacob and I think the other fella's Brazilian. They like missed the weight at the time, so they had to go off and cut weight and come back. The Brazilian fella had to shave his head to oh. make weight. He still didn't even. I don't even think he made it in the end. No, I don't but think he did in the end, no. <laughs> it hard, you know what I mean? Um, but no disrespect to Brazilian fella, we were all kind of hoping we got him first. Yeah. Because he, he was he late. Was like a warm up. <laughs> yeah, he was late to the tournament. He was like, missed the way he looked frail compared to all of us. Mm. So, so when he got the ball to pick who, who he fights, I was like, oh, like trying to bait him in to pick me, you know? I was like, oh no, like trying to hide. <laughs> and then pick the Spanish fella and I was like, fuck <laughs> So then me and Jacob had to go at it then, like, but yeah. my, my plan, honestly, I, I thought I was going to get one of the, the Spanish lad or the Brazilian fella and spark them out in the first round. And then, and then I was like, yeah. Jacob, that was in my mind, you know? Been, yeah, good to see because we would have seen Jay the knockout. Uh, it's like you know, potentially, like you said, if it was Brazilian who's like struggling with his weight and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and then you don't know what would have happened in the final then with that little mental boost as well. But yeah, it must yeah. be so hard, like you said, to to be landing these shots clean, to be looking this guy like straight in the face and knowing, like you can feel in these gloves like this is hitting, yeah. and to still be coming back and just thinking, this has never happened before. <laughs> yeah, it's just. But so you, you know what? That's when your ego your ego can destroy it. And even like, oh, I've, I've learned me lesson about the ego many times. Say that, yeah. Like next time. You know, like I, I'm humble and I've learned me lesson. I've had a big ego, went in, stuff has happened in fights that wasn't supposed to happen. But like, I, I was just, honestly, I just had this belief that once I touch anybody, they're going to sleep. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, fair play. I honestly just, <laughs> even watching watching the fight back like the noise of the shots yeah. landing especially yeah. on the fight divisions uh, the fight divisions video we seen that and the yeah. fucking the sound of it down, devastating like do you know what as well which was a really mad thing to notice but again because I was like ringside like the sound of the blood hitting the canvas because it wasn't just like it was like if it sounded like clumps of blood it was like like it was hitting the, and yeah. I was like yeah, I think that was again when that moment changed when people were like, oh my God, this is like, 
this is savage. So that's what I was yeah. going to say. You said like you, you've had like the eagle lessons and you've been humbled. The next time now, so obviously he said, sorry, Peggy's trying to join in the interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, obviously watching it back, there were times when you were landing flush and because you were so shocked that he wasn't rattling off him yeah. or wasn't dropping from him, you was almost like pausing and not utilizing. So next, yeah. time, next time that no matter what, don't have that moment of thinking he should go down, wait until he actually has before yeah. you give pause. Like, so next time will you just carry it, on like Yeah, like that that's the thing as well. That was my first fight in those gloves. Yeah. So like a lot of it was learning on the job. And as well, like looking back at me camp, I probably didn't do enough like sparring in those gloves. Because oh, really? I'm already of like I don't want to take damage like yeah. unnecessary damage in training and stuff. Mm. So I, I basically didn't do any sparring in them. But yeah, I, I just had in my head, land one shot and they're going down. But going into it, the next, if I have another fight in them gloves, to be honest, like I'm not fighting in those gloves again unless it's it's in one championship, you know what I mean? Mm. Like you need to be getting paid yeah. like major money for that, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, I think it was uh, Dan Bonner as well broke his hand. So it is. It's yeah. just a different game in those gloves, isn't it? Absolutely. So are you are you on the are you on the next Hitman? Because they've only just released that on the um a couple of days ago, aren't they? September. I, I, oh, so I have to take some time off. I haven't been allowed to train for four weeks because I got I got an injury after the so after the fight, I went to A and E uh because I had like a gash on my lip. And when I got there, they basically took one look at me and were like, mate, you need to get a fucking brain scan oh, because sure. of the damage I took, you know? And uh, and I got my hands x-rayed. I thought both my hands were broken. Like, that's how hard I was hitting them. I fucking yeah, basically... You did everything. You know? You're willing to break your own hand just to break his face. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Uh, but yeah, so they done a scan and they found like a small bleed on my brain. Like... They nearly missed it because it was that, like, minor. But, like, it's a big thing, do you know what I mean? We so, at the minute, but I didn't realise it was for, for such a serious reason, yeah? So yeah, what, yeah. What's the, what, how long are you out for? Yeah, so I, had to, I actually had to stay in the hospital for three days. I was supposed to go home the next day, but I had to stay, like, to keep you in. It's called observation. So they just basically make sure, because I didn't have any symptoms, like, I could still... I was fine, like, well, I didn't look fine, but I was operating, like, grand, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I stayed in there for three days then, which was actually nice, to be honest. It's nice to get away from the world. <laughs> now just getting people... I could people think of easier ways to get a holiday, Jay. I could think of easier ways to take three days off work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so after that then, I'm, I have to take four weeks off, which are over now, thank God. Um, so four weeks no training whatsoever like I could only walk that's the only thing I was allowed to do and then it's like eight to twelve weeks no sparring no head contact and then after that I can go back like proper do you know what I mean so I'll be I'll be out of action like four months or something oh my god that is insane yeah. I say I knew obviously because we chat on socials and stuff I knew that you weren't training yeah. But I thought that was just like as a precaution after the fight. I didn't realize it's because they'd actually found yeah. So because obviously you flew over, so you live in Ireland and you've flown over to England and been treated here. Yeah. What's the crossover like now? Like, do you have to have follow-ups in Ireland for them to like rescan you and stuff? Yeah, I just have to get scanned again. But the doctor said because it's that, like yeah. they said it's a eye blade, and they weren't they weren't actually sure whether it was a blade because it was that small, you know? Mm. So he basically said it will just go away by itself, just take the time off. But I'll, I'll get another scan, say in like two weeks or so. But he basically said it'll go by itself because it's so small, you know? What do your family think about that? Because obviously most of the time when I chat to like the families and stuff backstage, it's usually, without being sexist, it's usually the mum who's like, oh God, I wish you wouldn't do this. I wish you'd find something else. So when you actually... Yeah. You, Obviously, the other times you've come home, you've come home with the win, you've come home with belts, you've come home with titles, and it's all been like, you know, like the highest of the highs. But then yeah. low moments where it's like, oh, actually, he's having to stay in another country now. He's not home safe. Mm. He's 
what what was the family's reaction? Yeah, like my now my ma has never liked me doing it ever. Even when I'm winning, she doesn't like. Well, yeah. over the past few years, now that I'm winning titles and all that, she's kind of she has a little brag about it. But back in the day, it was like she didn't want me doing it whatsoever. Yeah. I'm be, like calling me an animal and an animalistic and all this shit. You know <laughs> what I mean? But yeah, like when I was sitting in the hospital, it was like fucking hell. Like because you know this. These are the dangers, but like you're in it and you're like, fuck, like, am I going to be able to like fight again? Do you know what I mean? Like all those thoughts going through your head. And then, of course, you have your family are like, Jesus, mate, like, what are you at? Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it was it was a weird one. It was a weird one, to be honest. But thank God I'm I'm fresh and it was only a minor injury. Like, well, it was minor on the minor end of the scale, you know? Yeah, like, is there such thing as a minor brain bleed? I feel like that's a major yeah, <laughs> like, that's, It's like yeah. a minor injury. I just had a brain bleed. I just had to four weeks off. It's not minor in most people's books, that, Jay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. If I, yeah. If I, if I, if I just wired differently. Even that sentence then, to anyone else, someone working in Asda, they would not just say, oh, I had a minor brain bleed. I had to take four weeks off. It'd be like a like life-changing thing. And you're like, yeah, just a minor injury. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but like, see, the thing is, when you're doing something you love yeah, and something yeah. you're passionate about, do you know what I mean? Like, as mad as it is to say, I'd be, I was willing to die in that ring to achieve me dreams, and yeah. do you know what I mean? And yeah. that's it. That's simple. I was willing to fucking die in there, and oh. that's fucked yeah. up to some people. But I'm willing to do whatever it takes to achieve me dreams. You know. Do you know what I think the thing is as well, like for this fight, because loads of people are still talking about this fight. And like say on the night, I went into the crowd, I bumped into Liam just after it. And he was like, like in shock. Cause I said, yeah. and I'm asking him questions. And he was like, and he was a little bit dazed. And, and a few people I spoke to um, were, were basically saying, saying Lisa as well from Bad Company, I was chatting to her and she was just like, wow, this is when you realize like it, it really is like to the death sometimes. Like, mm-hmm. We all see that, or we see it in movies, or you think it, but then when you actually see a fight, nine times out of ten when you watch a fight, it's it's not to that extent. Most of the yeah. time, people side or somebody will get dropped, or they'll land one of those jaw-breaking shots and the other guy will, like, stop. But with you two, like, none of you were forgiving up. So it was that yeah. really rare moment and that really rare experience where you actually see what you see in the films, and it, it becomes a moment of, like, oh, shit, this is actually real life now. Like, these guys... Yeah actually kill each other in here and there was definitely a moment there was definitely a moment in the fight where that kind of changed from us all like cheering and buzzing and like wow what a great scrap to like this is really really dangerous and it's mad because obviously mm-hmm. in the other fights you watch it and you see that and you understand that but then to actually for you guys to take it to that next level and actually show us the the reality of that it was yeah. really weird. it was I'm telling you there was a moment in the crowd where everything just changed and everyone everyone was just a bit like oh god yeah, see, like, that's the thing. When you have two blokes who really, like, there's not a lot of money in Muay Thai, yeah. but, like, one championship, even mm-hmm. still, to be honest, there's still not a lot of money in it once you get the one championship. But, like, we're we're both fighting for the opportunity to finally get the few quid. Do you know what I mean? Changing. Yeah, and, you're risking your life because it's life-changing. Yeah, like, and you can do what you love and get paid, like, even at the top, top lads in Muay Thai don't get paid an awful lot. Like, you see fellas who are, like, 40 still fighting. Do you know, I'm not, I'm not planning on fighting for that long, you know? <laughs> but, yeah, just that was the opportunity. And that's when two fellas who are willing to die to achieve their dreams and get, get to that position, like, that's what happens. Just, yeah, yeah. fight to it was a it was a sobering experience for a lot of people in the crowd. There was a, a couple of moments where people were like, "Oh shit, how's this gonna go?" Um, I want to talk to you about because obviously one thing that I always end up naturally chatting to you about is your mindset. And you into that yeah. you've recommended some great books to me, and you you you've posted on like when you're doing your challenges and stuff with having that like predisposition to have that mindset anyway, and then being told you have to take four weeks where you can't do anything. Yeah. How has that affected like? the J Council positive mindset, keep your habits up. Like, have you felt, have you felt a shift in that? Has that been hard to keep uh, up? But you know what? Like, 
I think it, it's fairly easy to stay positive when everything is going well. Oh, absolutely. But the true positivity and resilience happens in the moments when you're when you're down in the dumps and you have to pull yourself back up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, going from someone like I was training and working full time, training twice a day, cold plunges, fucking saunas, everything, eating well, sleeping well. And like when you go from doing that all the time to then I'm not even allowed to work. Yeah. I'm only allowed to walk. Like all I can do is watch fucking Netflix. Yeah, that's what how and, do you still going? Yeah, just remind. It's like having gratitude that, like, gotcha. I could have not been able to go back. Do you know what I mean? I'm only. It's only four weeks, realistically. Like, and I think just being able to reframe the situation in your mind and like changing your perspective on the situation, like, because I've been doing back to back fight camps. I've been non-stop. Like, I never really have time just to sit down and bleed and relax. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I haven't I haven't enjoyed the experience. You know what I mean? Yeah, of like course. I, you're trying to find the moments you, where... where what's you, it? So you're, trying to, you're still trying to find the moments where you can still find that gratitude for it. Otherwise, because you could just end up... Some people, this has happened before, where, like, they'll have an injury and like, take have to take, like, three, four, five weeks off and they just go into, like, a hole of, you know, depression yeah. and struggle and yeah I'm just wondering obviously because you do have that mindset of like let's get at it and you're very yeah. proactive like basically yeah how much of a struggle has it been to have to now, take moments in saying that like I've still been doing what I can like controlling what I can control like the things that are going to speed up me recovery is like me diet me sleep mm. still you know, getting sunlight in getting walks fucking Walking is a load of bollocks. <laughs> it just doesn't. It doesn't hit the spot. I, like, love walk. I know it's not the same as a sparring session, no. is it? Oh, I actually, I love walking when I'm in fight camp, mm. right? Like I get me steps in all the time. But like when walking is like your only form of exercise, it yeah. gets very like, oh man, I just want to take yeah. off sprinting, yeah. you know. But um, yeah, just controlling what you can can control and like I've really been focusing on like brain health like mm. true nutrition you know like just eating supplementing with like fish oils and creatine and making sure I'm eating all the right foods so we recover as quick as possible like yeah definitely. And that's been keeping me sane that's like a little experiment I'm like what foods can I eat like I tried torn everything into like a little challenge basically do you know what I mean I love that yeah and that's yeah like and as well you have loads of time to think and it puts things into like you realise how much how important like training is and yeah. like socialising with your friends because it's only when you don't have it you're like fuck man like I really love that shit do you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird in a way. Like, so I've obviously I've been trying to see off this. Like, I've been training with Neve Kinnahan, and um, yeah. she said the same. She she had a really bad shoulder injury, and she said it's mm. mad because when you come back after that, she had, she had to have like surgery, so she had loads of time out, and she's yeah. just been confirmed for a fight uh, coming up. And she said it's mad when when you've had to have that moment of like it's taken away from you. The level of gratitude you get when you get it back is like yeah. insane. So she like you're gonna be like that when you do finally get back into. So are you allowed back in the gym now? Then you say four weeks has passed. It's it's past this week, so Monday Monday I'll be back. I'll be yeah. back down. Starting slow and steady. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll be light, think, like. Sorry. Sorry, no. Saying, do you think like the the four weeks away from it when you go back now, you'll be like the the little things that might have annoyed you before, like skipping for your warm up or shadow boxing, like things that you used to think, oh, I can't be asked for this. Now you'll be like yeah. just buzzing to do it. But you know what? Like I, I love, I love training. I love that. Yeah. But it's not like a chore for me. Don't get me wrong. Some days I'm like, oh, I couldn't be arsed. Mm. But like, zoom out. Like I love, I love everything about training and preparing for fights. Um, and I actually during COVID, I actually had that experience. Like I had to take, like, mm. I, I, so I had a bad. I got knocked out in a fight. So I had to take like a year off. I took, I gave myself a year off 
And then once I went back, that's when I was like, fuck, I bleed and I love this shit. I'm never stopping again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like four weeks is is nothing, you know. I took off like a year before to make sure that I can recover properly. So Yeah. And yeah. Do you know what I love about you? Is like you've got like a really good handle on like the bigger picture of like, even though like Muay Thai is literally like everything that like you live and breathe now, you're very good at taking that zoom out and being like, the the most important thing is like time with your friends and family. The most important thing is like doing something that you love and you've been doing yeah. like clips and stuff. And it seems like all of those life lessons that you've been accumulating for the past couple of years, like all the books that you read and everything that you feed in your mind is so beneficial now when something does go wrong. Cause now it's like, well, I've got all that knowledge banked now. So now this is a really hard situation for me. It's okay. Yeah. Back to these positive habits. Yeah. I think that's, that's it. That's a good point. Like, cause I, I have all these tools. Yeah. So it's only really in times like this where you're like, fuck, you know what to do in this situation. Yes. Do you know? Yeah, that's it. You don't where feel I- lost or you don't get stuck in that hole because yeah. you've got, you've got it in your belt. Like, yeah, absolutely. That- some people they get an injury and then say like for example you can you injure your knee and you're out for like a year is a horrible injury and a lot of people then they'll end up going off and they'll just as soon as you can't train it's like right fuck everything let's start eating shit let's I'm just gonna sit on the couch not do anything absolutely whereas I'm like right I can still eat healthy I can still focus on my sleep yeah. I can still go for walks. I can still read and like level up in other areas of my life. So I think, yeah, the knowledge I've gained over the years is definitely coming into use now, you know? Yeah, definitely. In those hard times. Love that. Love that. I'm getting, um, so I've told you I'm on the, we're on like the little free Zoom. So I've just got a little yeah. notification saying I've only got five minutes before it's going to kick me <laughs> out. So before I do get kicked out, thank you so much for your time. Um, what what is next for you then? Like, so obviously you've just said uh, you said earlier in the interview that you're not as keen now to go on those four art schools. Now you've seen the damage it can cause, unless it's like big yeah. days. So next, are we looking at like going back to the? Is it ten outs that you fight in on the? Once is what I fight in, yeah. But, yeah, I, yeah. I, so I say my next fight, but for, I don't know now. I to be honest, in regards to like fights and everything, I'm not even. I'm just focused on getting back. And to me, this is like the good thing about like losing, even though I, I'm i an ultra competitor, I hate fucking losing more than anyone. <laughs> but like, good thing is you kind of go back to the drawing board and you start from scratch. Mm. So now I'm just focused now on getting back in the gym and slowly building. I'm not even thinking of when I'll be fighting, you know? Like Andy was on to me about the hitman in September but I just have to see what way I am yeah. uh, and I'm, again I'm not rushing I'm not rushing into anything I know I only have one fucking brain and I want to keep it together do you know what I mean so yeah. I'll be time on that I love that as well because even that in itself I mean I don't know what you were like sort of like four or five years ago but I know like how I would have been four or five years ago like the ego and the competitiveness would be like yeah fuck, I'm going straight back in blah, blah, blah. but I feel like the the response that you just gave shows like the level of like emotional yeah. maturity and like the like we were saying like the lessons you've learned because actually you know let's just take a pause like we've just had a big thing let's come back to the drawing board like yeah. even just that response do you feel that in yourself as like years ago would you have been different and straight back in and now you're just thinking a little right. bit sensible yo I've lost the fight and then literally book another fight now I want to get this win yeah, back. Yeah. And I've lost that fight and then I said book another one like I've done this four fights in a row and I, like then the last fight I got knocked out so I had like I lost and I was like book another one lost yeah. get me another one I'm gonna get this win rather than going wait what, what am I doing wrong? yeah and not saying what did I do wrong in the last fight I was just like no I fuck these cunts I can batter them all yeah, <laughs> did yeah I? I've been the same but, 100% like, just pause for a second. What lessons am I learning from this loss and what way can I improve then going into the next fight? And yeah, that's that's pretty that. much I love that. Because it is what obviously like we talk about mindset loads, like it is those little moments when you don't realize when you see like a moment of growth. So even the comparison of like when you said I lost book another, book another, book another, and you just yeah. went straight in, you're not thinking about it, definitely led by ego and you just like not yeah. really- the issue whereas now it's like if we pause we recalibrate we do this right then we'll go yeah. back 100 exactly. we'll percent. get we'll get the the lesson we'll get the 
the growth and, and hopefully the result again. So like that, that's it's just not, a difference. Yeah, so some things it's like it takes you a while. Like say I could I lose that fight, it's probably gonna take me about two or three months to actually look at that from a different perspective and see where I went wrong. You know, yeah. like. Even usually in the past, I would have lost the fight, and literally the next day, I'm watching it back over and over and over, trying to see where I went wrong with that fight. I've watched it, I've watched it loads of times now, but I haven't been like, where did I go wrong? Where did I go right? I was just like, I noticed a couple of things, then I just took like a little mental note of it. But like, say in a few weeks, I'll, I'll actually sit down and watch it and be like, right, where did I go wrong? And what yeah. was I doing? I, like and be more analytical about it not while I'm all emotional and like yeah. oh blah blah do you know what I mean well even the difference of like knowing that of knowing now that you need that pause that in itself yeah. is like a massive step forward because I've done the same where when you're led by emotion you just go straight in and then you make more mistakes or you miss yeah. it because you're so so riled up whether you're angry or upset or whatever like any 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 like negative emotion just blocks from like actually like you said being being analytical and actually seeing the point yeah, exactly. You can't learn the lesson because you're just that fueled by emotion. Yeah. And that's why it's like, fucking hell, like even like a year later, I'm like, fuck, that's that's where I went wrong. And like, and it's a year later after the fight. like. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Listen, it's just give me a little pop up again. I've literally got, it says a minute and 15 seconds. So I just want to say, <laughs> it sounds like you've got a, like, not that I ever doubted because obviously we chat loads. I know, I know the kind of mind frame you've got, but just to show everybody else, I think it's a really good example of what you're saying is over the years, you've learned to deal with it this way. And it sounds like the way you're dealing with it now is like, very very healthy and I'm really glad yeah. we'll, we'll get to share this because some other young fighter might look at this and be like oh right, okay I'm going to learn this way I'm going to do it the way Jay does and just take those moments so yeah. thank you very much for sharing your experience with us and I will hopefully grab you again very soon yeah can't wait to see what you do next Jay thank you see you, you. see you later let's see how you do under pressure oh been wanted this forever. I've been in the field with whatever they throw at me. Brush it off, pick myself up, moving on to the better. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Ain't no errors, baby. It's a new era. I wake up early, feeling rich like I'm Kesha. I get to the paper, boy. Extra, extra.